Hello again, Donald. Here we are on another hour long journey talking about money, essentially. So we ended our last um, webinar that we did together, our last chat. We were really talking about the state of the world, um, you know, how we've become so corrupt financially. And we did that in the previous video as well, talking about religion and so on. And now it's time to move on to help people from our understanding and to give them a solution rather than keep going over old ground. It's time, time to move on. So as you and I both know, and this is so important for everyone to understand that you can't have autonomy and be a sovereign being as long as you're dependent on a wage or a salary or someone else supporting you financially that is not a sovereign being coming from your own autonomy okay so um we come from that standpoint and i most certainly do i know donald does so today we're going to talk about the ways that you can start to thrive financially uh coming from no money at all to a little bit of money that you can use for trading capital and you know even putting away a little bit each month as Donald's just spoken to me about. So that's where we're going to come from today. Um, there's no guarantees in any of this. We are not financial advisors. We're just sharing what we have experienced, what we've researched, and really what we know to be true from, you know, our decades of experience um, living on this earth and in the financial world. So Donald, I know you've got some really good um, information to share with people, um, how you believe you can help people going forward um, with a solution to the financial challenges that lots of people have. Yes, uh, thanks Hazel, thanks very much. Yeah, the, the thing here is that this isn't any longer speculation. You know, th this isn't a matter of theory, um, you know, th this is what is now being effectively put into practice by quite literally hundreds of thousands of people uh, within the companies that we're involved with. Um, I happen to be involved in four different companies um, and there are hundreds of thousands of people in each of them. So this, the, the scams have, have been exposed to what they are. And we're, we've now drilled down, we've, we've had all of that nonsense go on over the past few years. And we're now at the stage where we're dealing with companies who have absolutely bona fide owners, um, business models, and you know, they're absolutely legitimate and they're making a huge difference to, to people's lives. Now that in itself, I think is, is one of the, the things that people struggle with the most when it comes to this. And yes, we have dwelt quite a lot on the, uh, the reason that we're in this mess, which all you know, stems from, as you quite rightly said, the corruption within the, you know, the prevailing authorities and, and, and so on. But really, I think the biggest obstacle in people's minds is, is, is this idea that things are too good to be true. And what I want to share with people is the fact that over the course of the last, what has now been probably just over a year, maybe up to 18 months, the, the difference that I've been able to make in my life and in the lives of my family and close friends through the training programs that I'm involved with and using the technology, you know, that, uh, that is now so well proven and, and is working really, really well for people. So that, that really is the springboard for this discussion, um, you know, from my point of view, Hazel. Yeah, so, so tell us about that. You, you mentioned to me before we started recording this that there are, according to uh, your experience um, and mine as well, actually, there are three ways, essentially, three ways that people can start to get on their feet. And one of them is trading your own capital. Then the other was to put a little bit away each month. And if you're absolutely rock bottom and can scrape a little bit together, and we just mean a couple of hundred pounds, if that um, is to network and team build, which gives you a huge leverage in actually, and I'm going to use a favorite meme, getting rich quickly. And I know that from my own experience with a bona fide company that I've researched deeply and other companies. And 
it is true. I have gotten rich from one company very quickly by sharing the opportunity. So um, it's not too good to be true. It is simply true mm. and it has worked. So can you take us through those three points that you mentioned? Yeah, sure. The, I mean, the, the first one, the first thing, like the general umbrella thing that we have to have to come to terms with here is the mechanism that's going on with the trading and why it works and how it works and what real world numbers we can actually be dealing with. Because when we are directly accessing the financial markets, and when I say that, I'm talking about currency markets and cryptocurrency. So traditional Forex and cryptocurrency. When we have got traders taking our capital and trading for us, the returns that can be generated on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis are really extraordinary. And we've, I think, become conditioned to the figures and the levels of income, which, you know, we've grown up with to be acceptable. And in our minds, that's what we hold to be the, the reality. And, and obviously, and you gave the very uh, important disclaimer, Hazel, you know, nothing is guaranteed in the, in the trading world, real time trading. But the companies that we're working with are spreading the risk themselves between lots and lots and lots of different markets and different trading styles, techniques, and their, their risk management is absolutely superb. And I say that for, 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 for all of them. Um, so, so, you know, the idea of generating somewhere in the region of, you know, a five or six percent, seven percent return per week in some of these companies is absolute heresy as far as the traditional investment world is concerned because it's not just about the growth in the value of an asset. It's about taking, in this case, Bitcoin, depositing it with a company and having it traded for us on our behalf. And I think this is one of the things that people really miss and they follow the headlines, oh, Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin was great 2017, then it was a disaster and now it's picking up again, it's gonna crash again. Well, it's not actually just about the value of the assets. It is about what is being done with that capital through these trading companies. So these numbers that we're talking about, you know, somewhere between, yeah, as I said, you know, it can be up to 20% a month, you know, for 25% a month for, for certain mm -hmm. companies. And, and that is the first thing that we have to get our head around and then look at the ways of, of using that. So it's still becoming that barrier of disbelief, I think, in the, in the first place. I mean, you must have come across that yourself, Hazel. Well, yeah, I have. You know, when I first discovered um, the difference between the traditional banking system giving us 1% like a year and, you know, from getting someone, a trader, a professional trader to trade for us on the Forex exchange, and we get that and more in one day. Yeah. I was shocked. You know, it's going back a few years, but I was shocked, Donald. And, um, but it didn't take me long to get my head around it because I went deep into the research of how these banks and big corporations and governments really operate, which led me down a labyrinth of um, truths being exposed, you know, which we've gone over in, in other um, things. Um, and, and so as well, you see, we've all been conditioned to believe property, invest in property, invest in gold and silver, uh, you know, these traditional assets, which no longer in 2020 stand true. Now, I can relate a little story here that my sister just recently sold um, a property. She bought it 11 years ago for £120,000 sterling. She sold it this year for £220,000. So she made a profit actually of 105,000. It took her 11 years to get that. 11 years. And <laughs> we get that, I know myself, in less than a year by going the way the wealthy elite go and, you know, trade. It's all about trading. So that's, you know, people who, I know people who own a lot of properties and rent them out. And they're forever telling me that there is no money now when they compare it to what is available now, which is Forex trading and Bitcoin trading for the masses. So yeah. we've come a long way, Donald, haven't we, in, in what is true for the common folk? 
around no, ab ab absolutely and you know what, what we have access to here is if you like the the, the, the huge markets absolutely huge yeah. markets it's, with, it's with, beyond belief yeah. you know six plus trillion dollars a day bigger yeah. than the stock market when, what people have got that get their head around is the numbers it is massive massive yeah absolutely so so you know having established that this trading activity is real it's genuine uh, from my point of view it's also ethical and that's something that's very important to me personally and certainly to my family and friends is that you know the idea of trading in in the forex market or in the crypto market really is no more ethically challenging than going on holiday you know because a, a lot of people are very wary of this idea oh you know it's stocks and shares and you know what, what if your money's being used for this or, or used for that we are quite simply, you know, trading currencies against each other. And from my point of view, that is giving us access to this huge liquidity pool that the banks have been hoarding for themselves. So, so that, that's, that's, that's what we're up against. The, the systems and the, the ways of doing this, basically, because we've got access to this trading technology, we can generate very substantial returns in a very short space of time. And even the likes of the well-established hedge funds and so on, I mean, they're, they're still doing well if they're getting 20% a year. You know, so even the conventionally managed funds that are accessing these markets are still being done on a very, very, very um, low basis in, in comparison to what we've got access to. And that means, of course, that you need to have millions and millions actually put away, you know, and invested, yeah. which is how obviously the wealthy elite, you know, keep themselves mm -hmm. going. So, so the point is that we've actually got the opportunity here to generate really substantial returns in a really short space of time. And what I think we should do, Hazel, um, you may have already done this with your group, but in, you know, as a link in, in below this video is, is to show um, a compounding calculator. And this for me was the absolute eye opener. This was the epiphany when I suddenly realized how quickly you could grow capital with regular compounding um you know of whatever percentage a week or a month and you play with those figures and you suddenly wonder what on earth you've been doing with your money all your life up mm -hmm. till this point mm -hmm. because you've been squandering it i well i've been squandering it when i when i when i look back at the way that i my relationship used to be with money and the ridiculous things that i used to prioritize and not knowing about this whole system of uh, of investing and compounding. I cringe, actually, if I'm completely honest. Yeah, I, I know, you know, uh, my daughter, for example, she speaks of the same thing. She was in the corporate world earning loads of money and she's out of that paradigm now, but she looks back and she says to me, mom, the money that came through my hands, yeah. but so be it, it's no good regret. You know, yeah. she really yeah. enjoyed it and I'm sure you enjoyed it. And um, for myself, Donald, I, when I jumped into the spiritual realms and, and understood that I had a massive support system, you know, in God and uh, invisible people, shall I say, I don't want to go down that road for this talk, but I did believe, and I know many people that come behind me on my journey, I absolutely believed that I was well cared for and that I would always be taken care of. Now that has been absolutely true, but it was just that I was cared for. Always had a roof over my head, always had food, always had, um, you know, the, the necessities and just a little bit more. But that's all gone out of the window now. And that was all around my belief system, of course, that I've since changed and I've embodied that, um, you know, I am the God that I talk about. And to then, once I changed that belief some years ago now, it took me on a financial journey. And that's when my eyes were really, you know, eyes wide open for sure. So um, yeah, that, that is, and there's a huge proportion of people that think like that as well. I'm always cared for, but that is not enough. It's yeah, it, not it enough. Is, uh, so, sorry, yes, it is this idea that, you know, as long as you've got a roof over your head and food on the table, that, you know, that's, that's all that you yeah. need. Yeah. And, and of course, it, it is absolutely, for me, essential to be grateful, um, you know, for these simple basic things in life. And, and that gratitude, 
you know, is, is so, so important and actually is, is necessary in order to move beyond that as well. Yeah. You know, if you don't have gratitude for the basic things, then yeah. you're going to push away any other opportunities that, that come your way. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You're, 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 you're going to be stuck. Into, yeah. You just contract into a miserable being. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I suppose really where I want to go with this, um, going back to your original question, which I've done a politician on and, and talk, talked around, uh, but unlike politicians, I'm going to come back to your original question. Yeah. Um, is, is looking at the, the systems that we can use, the very practical or completely practical systems. And the first one is simply, you know, if you've got a, a lump of cash, I mean, let, let's say you've got, um, you know, 50,000 yeah. pounds. You can, you know, you can, you can put that into a company uh, or, a, or spread the risk, if you like, between several companies and you can expect to generate, you know, let, let's, let's go easy on it and let's say 10% a month. Yeah. You can actually. It's very reasonable. Very, very reasonable. Very reasonable. Yeah. You know, you can spread the risk between lots of different high and low performing companies, but let's say, you know, you can actually generate 5,000 pounds a month in profits. And it's then up to you what you do with that. It's that simple. And what I'm recommending to people is that they have to balance up um, the risk against, I suppose, um, what could be argued to be um, getting carried away with the notion of compounding. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we know that any company can fail. And this is one of the really challenging dichotomies that we're dealing with here. So we do have to look at spreading our risk and, and so on. Yeah. But my recommendation to people, and what, what I've been doing is investing half, like reinvesting it, and then withdrawing half. So yeah. for argument's sake, if I've got 50,000 pounds and I put it into the trading companies, I could expect to withdraw two and a half thousand a month and leave two and a half thousand in there to build. Yeah. And what I would recommend to anybody watching this is to go and look at the compounding calculator that we'll give you a link to and just see what that means, you know, how quickly that grows, playing with those percentages, you know, looking at that in a year, two years, five years time. And that will be one of the most sobering, eye-opening calculations that, that you ever, you know, come, come to face with. Mm -hmm. And if it's not 50,000 pounds or it's whatever numbers are relevant to you, then put that in and, and, and see what it can do. My point being here that if you've got money in the bank at the moment that's doing nothing, or even if you've got money in stocks, shares, whatever, which are incredibly volatile and incredibly yeah. vulnerable at the moment, then consider you know, the risks of putting it into one of the companies that we work with are tiny in comparison you know, to holding it in the bank and, and, and so on for all the reasons that we've, that we've previously discussed. So that's if you've got a chunk of change, um, then, then you, can, you can do that. I mean, would you say that's a fair assessment, Hazel, for, for someone who's actually got something maybe a little later in their life or they've got an inheritance yeah. that's come in or Definitely. something? Definitely. If, you, if people listening to this, you know, you have got, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 in, in an ISA here in England in a savings account, then, um, yeah, I totally wholeheartedly go along with what Donald said and invest it somewhere else, yeah. definitely. And you can speak to Donald or myself. We'll have our details underneath this. If you want, you know, private guidance or you want to chat um, to us um, about all of this, but definitely your pension, you know, we get to pensionable age very, very quickly. And for a very small fee, not even the 50,000, you can create a really generous pension pot for yourself. But yeah, going by if you've got 50,000, which, which to be honest, Donald, quite a few people do have, and then they have it in a savings account um, and they're not getting much returns at all. Yeah. Also, bear in mind that the European Central Bank is now talking about negative interest rates. Yeah, yeah, that's happening. So, so they're, they're going to charge you to keep your money in the bank. Yeah, I had a chap in Sweden. That's already happening too. So that is already happening, Donald. And, no, so, but we're not. Yeah. We're stay away from that. We're going on the positive, but we're well, throwing these little anecdotes that are very, exactly. very exactly. sit up and listen, people. And I think that one, one of the crucial things about this is that a lot of people, when it comes to money, have this feeling of futility. 
you know, it's like, what's the point? I'm never going to get ahead. I'm yeah. never going to get anywhere. As soon, you know, it's hand to mouth. As soon as I've got it, and and the, and people are actually there's a there's a kind of dopamine response to spending money that people yeah. have as well. There's there's an addiction that comes with blowing what you've got and then getting back down to rock bottom. You know, and the struggle and the stress, the cortisol that comes from that yeah. is, is an addictive cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think I mean I certainly I have to acknowledge that that's where I was a few years ago. You know, I was almost psychologically determined to keep myself at rock bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I can laugh when I, when I look back at it and I think about it now, but um, it's, it's really serious. To go through, isn't it? it is horrific to go through. There's no, there's no bad about it. And it's very traumatic to the nervous system and can take years to get over. But we, you know, Donald and I both know, and there's thousands upon thousands of people that know that we are in dangerous times and we've got no more time to pussyfoot around with our money. And even if you have got nothing, we have programs, platforms, and companies that we can recommend you to. And we don't just leave you, we help you. We take you by the hand and get you through the whole process because it is a learning curve if you know nothing about these things. And the mindset there is, is to just be open to take it one step at a time. So Donald, we talked about trading capital. If people yeah. have got, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000, yeah. you know, that's, that's easy, isn't it? They put that into, have that traded for them. You know, we don't want people to say, you know, you've got to learn to trade because that is an art yeah. and it takes years and a yeah. certain kind of personality to be able to do it successfully. Yeah. So let's, let's not be fooled there. Yeah. there I think it's 95% of people who trade and say their professional trade is just armed and they yeah. lose all your money for you. <laughs> That's a really important point, actually, Hazel, because when I first became aware of trading and the, the, the potential of trading, uh, I started trying to learn to trade. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went on numerous online courses. Yeah. I even went down to London um, to a Forex trading course. And it was important in the sense that I got to thoroughly understand what trading was about mm -hmm. you know i can now read a chart so i know all about the technical indicators and points of support and resistance and and so on so um you know a lit it gave me a literacy if you like yeah. but what i very quickly realized was that um it was absolutely insane and incredibly stressful to attempt to trade for yourself yeah and this is what peeves me to be honest with you about so much of the stuff online that you'll see adverts for hmm. you no know, i mean unless you are absolutely dedicated and prepared to yeah. you know, throw yourself in and you don't need the money and you're prepared to lose money before you can get it back again you no know, it's it's like anything else it's like you know when your car needs fixing you know do you really want to be the one who knows how to fix your car yeah, yeah. you know and yeah, and if you if you do want to learn to trade, to trade money, um, it's got to be a passion. You've yes. got to be obsessed with it because you've got to be on it all the time. You can't afford to, um, you know, see, you can't afford to dabble. Let's put it no. that way. We yeah. dabble, don't we? The other, the other really important thing, Hazel, is that you cannot afford to be emotionally attached. That's right. Yeah. The Absolutely. psychology, the psychology of trading is excruciating. Yeah. And I certainly discovered that I didn't have the temperament for it because in the situation that I was in, I was so strapped for cash mm -hmm. and every single, you know, 10 pounds that I was trading, you know, meant, meant something to you. Yeah. Meant too much yeah. to me. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's, that's the point at which I started looking for other ways of having people trade, you know, for, yeah. for me. Yeah. So, so that again, you know, that, that, that's why we're involved in the companies we're involved in. But for people who don't have the capital, you know, the, the, the second way of, of doing this is to find a way. And, and this, unfortunately, presumes that you have a certain amount of time. And, you know, as we both alluded to, I think we have the feeling that time is running out. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, stopping being wasteful mm -hmm. is, is, the, is, the, is what it's allows you to get started yeah. with this. Selling the assets, the junk that you've got lying around in your garden, your garage, your your house your old pc equipment whatever it is yeah literally it's all, those, it's all those it's all those little bits of jewelry ladies especially all those little trinket bracelets silver and gold that are just chucked in your jewelry box somewhere and you don't wear you don't love get them all together and yeah. sell them 
as yeah. gold and silver, which, you know, is worth less than Bitcoin. So, you know, just do that. That is one thing that I did, Donald. I got all my bits of jewellery that had been given to me over the years, got them all together. And it was quite substantial in the end, what that was worth to me. And I just kept one piece of jewellery that I absolutely love um, because it's not important to me anymore. But yeah, and other things, you know, we can give tips on for people to do. So yeah, sorry for interrupting. So put a no. little away each month. Stop, stop collecting junk, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and well, and sell off stuff that you don't absolutely love. The the other thing is that what I've discovered is that you know money loves systems. Yeah, and and being systematic with the way that you handle your money uh, all of a sudden makes things happen. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, I you know I'm not preaching from some mountaintop here. You know, I was the world's worst with this. But when I realized what was going on and, and how wasteful I was being with the money, you know, a simple thing like, you know, having your wages coming into one account, which you then apportion up and it happens instantly. So, you know, my, my weekly wages go into an account and instantly a hundred pounds goes into Coinbase standing order set up mm -hmm. for every Wednesday yeah. bang, straight into Coinbase. I don't, I don't have time to think about it. I don't have time to say, no, it's not happening, or I don't think I can afford that. It's a commitment to building wealth and financial independence. And again... Isn't it amazing that when you commit and you do it, that money is found every month, yeah. isn't it? Yes. You, yes. Know, you know, it really is. Once you commit and you do it, it's, you know, you think, well, I don't know why I didn't do that for years. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, but, it's, it's a magical, yeah. Well, psychological hurdle is absolutely massive for yeah. someone who hasn't grown up with a healthy attitude to money you know so so making that the priority just make it doesn't matter what it is whether it's 10 20 pounds it doesn't matter you know as long as you start to see that principle working because when you start to see how successful it is and within a few months of doing it what you've put in has doubled trebled quadrupled whatever as, yeah. as will happen yeah. Then, then all of a sudden it becomes naturally motivating and it's not yeah. a question of, Oh God, you know, I've had to put hundred pounds savings away this, this week. It's like, wow, there goes my hundred pounds. Right. You've got to take deep and, light. And, and, in a few, and it is naturally motivating. And then, and then you start to go, well, hang on a minute. Is that as much as I can put away? Or what if I did this? What if I stopped buying this? What if I canceled this subscription? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I lockdown had a lot to do with it, but I've also, moved and cut my cost of living substantially because I didn't need, if you like, the luxury of where I was previously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there are lots of reasons that, you know, led yeah. to me moving, but I was very, very happy to be curtailing my monthly expenditure, downscaling my living accommodation to something that is absolutely adequate uh, in order to liberate more cash that I could put into trading. Yeah. And, yeah. and th these are the personal changes that I, that I've made in order to turn a situation where I was skint and broke and just not having enough into building a serious pot of, of trading capital. Yeah. And everybody can do this. Yeah. And everybody so let's be clear, it is a mindset change. This is nothing to do with how much money you've got coming in per se. This is about your mindset changing. Okay. So that, that, that's, it's crucial. It's crucial. Yeah. So we've got that put a little away each month and it yeah. really it really is magical how quickly that that accrues. And so we come to the third one, which is networking and team building. So yeah. talk to us about that. Yeah. This for me was actually I think the most challenging of the of the whole of the whole thing because I'm not a salesy person. I have worked in various industries. I used to work for the bank, uh, Oil Bank of Scotland in customer service. And I absolutely hated the, the sales world. And I've worked for other private companies, you know, that have all been very sales driven. And, and the problem with it was that I knew that the product they were selling was crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And it, it wasn't what people needed. It wasn't in their better interests. It was really not far from being, well, certainly disingenuous. Let's, let's put it that way. And, 
And so I, my, my, my approach to sales has always been, you know, when people have a genuine need, they'll come looking for it. And if I've got something that they want, then, you know, I'll make sure that they know about me and know what I offer. And then, you know, we'll strike a deal that's mutually beneficial. And so in the first place, when I, I got involved in, in various of the crypto and trading companies, I unfortunately found myself confronted with exactly the old sales ethos yeah. uh, in, the, in the early days. And it was all about just getting out there and selling to, you know, building a network, selling to them, getting the referral commissions. And it almost didn't matter whether the product was in the use. There was this, there was this psychological bullying actually that went yeah. on from, from yeah. business owners and team leaders, which was exactly the same as I experienced in the bank and why I left the bank after four mm -hmm. months, because there's, there was a bullying and it's like, it was, a, it was fear driven. It's like, if you don't make the sale, if yeah. you go through a certain number of people, then you're not going to make the, the, the targets yeah. and then you're not going to do well. And, and so I was really, really challenged by that side of the business when I, when I first came across it, you know, with the with crypto companies. Yeah, yeah, that is true. And it is, um, I, I've noticed with um, the companies that I'm with and teams that I'm a part of, those that come from, let me just say, the old school way of doing it that you're talking about, uh, it's, it, it's an, as like you, it makes me cringe. I just cannot and will not do it. And it's push, 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 meet your goals, set your goals. You know, it, we're not into anything like that. Anyone listening to this, that is not the way that Donald and I operate at all. We're yeah. into sharing the opportunity, laying the facts, and for you to make a decision going forward. But coming back to helping those um, that really don't have much at all, and there's plenty of people like that, with team building and networking, we want to be clear that if you come to us for guidance, we're not into that sales stuff where you have to meet goals, push, 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 and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, had, to, I had to really um, preface you know, this with that caveat because um, the last thing I would want anyone to, to, to think is that you know, there's any shred of that ethos in, yeah. in the way that we approach what we're doing here. What, what has, the way that I've done it and the way that I um, feel good about what I'm doing, not just good, but I feel great actually about what I've managed <laughs> to achieve, um, is that I bring, I'm bringing value. You know, if you're, if you're doing something, it doesn't really matter what it is. If you get good at what you're doing, then there's value in it. And so rather than for me, you know, rather than simply signing people up and, and getting a commission of what they deposit or whatever, my whole ethos was to learn absolutely everything that I possibly could about the industry and about the company that I was essentially recommending. And that way I am responsible for, you know, the introduction to that company. And if there are glitches, if, you know, there are problems that occur as they always do. Every company has glitches and problems, but that I would be offering that value. I would be offering the support. I would be offering the guidance so that people aren't just left on their own. Now there's a flip side to that, which is that people themselves need to take responsibility. Yeah, of course. You know, and I'm not, I'm not yeah. negating that, but if I've only shared the networking opportunities with my own close family and friends, and this was also very important to me to start off with is that I had to be able to stand by what I was recommending to people that I've known and loved, you know, for a very, very long time. And for the whole thing to have that level of confidence and integrity, I'm not at the stage at the moment of, of casting the net much wider than that. I'm very happy to help people who approach me. And of course I'll get them, I'll get them set up but my focus is on my family and friends and, and their family and friends. And yeah. that's the way that the network is building. Mm. And, and that for me has made an absolutely massive difference because yes, I am getting the referral commissions, but I'm also helping other people underneath me to sign people up. To, and when I say that, it's, it's not just signing people up, it's sharing a life-changing opportunity. It is. I, I really want to make that clear to everyone because I come across that kind of language you know, uh, since I've been into the Forex world, I come into that language a lot. You know, you're signing people up, you're enrolling people, you're getting commissions. 
no stop that we are sharing something that will make you rich and if the company's struck it's not our structure it's the structure of the company to keep the company going you cannot belong to a company that's not wealthy and the way that it is made wealthy is by us sharing all of what that we share and we get rewards for doing that okay that's just part of it so i would really like to emphasize a mind shift about the language that we use that just share it and because you share it the structure of the company which needs to generate wealth to all of the members hands out a reward and a commission yeah and there's a very 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 important point here that you just touched on um when it comes to people's perception of network marketing and trading companies and that is that all of the companies that i'm involved in if they ceased recruiting new members the company would still continue to be successful and profitable it is not dependent on new revenue coming in because at the core of the company is trading trading is what is actually creating the wealth for people so if nobody else if they stopped the team building the company would still grow still be completely solvent still be able to pay out all of it all of their dividends and yeah. that, for me, that for me is the acid test for every company that i've looked at and i've done my own research into yeah. is, is where's the money coming from are they actually trading show yeah. us the proof where are the traders what broker are they using what are the daily weekly monthly trade results mm -hmm. can they be audited because if you don't have that, then you have no guarantee that, you know, you are being paid from genuine trading profits. Right, yeah. If you don't, then you have what is known as a Ponzi or a pyramid. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And uh, what we're talking about here is, you know, we've done our due diligence in great depth, in great depth. So um, we're not sharing stuff that we haven't tried and tested at least for a year now in them so we're talking about guys and everybody listening to this we're talking about a passive income revolution that is hitting the planet right now that's what we're talking about it, it is relatively new that ordinary folk like you and me can take a part of this but i know that donald and myself we have become rich because of it in a very short space of time so let's get back to the networking and the team building. Do you think we've covered most of what we wanted to say for those who don't have a lot to, to start with? Uh, and can you define what is a lot to start with? So we give people a rough idea. Yeah, well, the, the, the networking thing is challenging uh, and I found it challenging, you, you know, even, even just leveling up with yourself enough to come on camera. Um, you know, it requires social media skills and it, it requires that ability to 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 learn your subject matter to get confident to, yeah. uh you know to to have experienced the benefits and 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 then you know be confident sharing it so it is challenging and, and people do find it challenging and they can be they can be put off by that but i mean i've been very much guided by by leaders and mentors one of whom yeah. yourself hazel you know, you, you were in there ahead of me, you're in there, you know, and the various other people, you know, in, in the companies. It's, it's no more difficult than changing career, is it, Donald, really? Or changing jobs? It's no, no but more it's, difficult. But it, it is, is there is something jobs. to learn that yeah. we guide you all through. We don't, you know, we show you how to operate within social media, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, or whatever platform yeah. you use. We don't just leave you um, to, um, you know dangle yeah but yeah, yeah. It, is, that is, it is it's a learning curve yeah and the other thing i would say hazel is that it's a bit like you know when you start you know with trepidation putting a certain amount of money away every week or month and you're not sure if it's really going to make a difference when you when you first start to share this with a you know a couple of friends or family you know even if you we're only talking about a few hundred dollars. Um, yeah. yeah, that was what the question was, wasn't it? Yeah, How much is You can amount. test this out. You can test all of this out yeah. for a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Two, three, five hundred dollars yeah. is 
all you really need to get going. Um, yeah. And in, in fact, one of the programs, you can come in with as little as 10 or 20 dollars, you yeah. know, and, and start. Get started. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so that there is no barrier to entry at the lower end right. okay. you know, of, yeah. the, of the scale. Yeah. And, and you can build capital simply by getting other people to come in with 10 or 20 dollars. And you'll see the difference that it makes. And your 10 or $20 within a few weeks has, has doubled because yeah. you've shared it a few times and yeah. it's been trading. Yeah. Um, but when, and, and so, I also want to emphasize, which I'm, you know, is that you come in with that uh, the smaller amount at, at the lower end of it, if you like, because it is the lower end of it, but it's still huge, huge, huge opportunity. It's not about pushing and pressurizing people. Yeah. Please don't do that. It's just about getting confident you know with with this with the companies we're talking about with forex trading it's about understanding your craft and yeah. you have to put effort into that and it's about learning to eloquently speak about it you know it doesn't come just like magic i mean i used to in my early days i'd walk around my home talking out loud about whatever it was i wanted to share with people so let's talk about forex trading and I learned that way. I learned by watching videos and so on. And then I would um, regurgitate what you know I knew to be true through the videos. So I didn't just learn how to speak about it and get on a, a webinar like this with Donald. Um, that's how I did it. I just used to speak out loud. And it just kind of through osmosis became a part of me. So, you know easy enough to do it, it is it is and people have to try it and experience it and 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 then pursue it to a level of depth and research that you know that they feel comfortable yeah. with it yeah. um, well, what i've discovered um and and looking at if you like the antithesis of the sales ethos is most of the time when people have got involved with you know my um business my online business it has come about through conversations where we simply talk about what's going on in, a, in our lives. And a bit like you saying there, Hazel, you know, when people ask me what I've been doing, what am I up to these days? You know, I'll tell them honestly, truthfully, yeah. um, that, you know, that I'm into cryptocurrency and, and yeah. forex trading and that, um, you know, that I'm now doing, you know, pretty well at it. And, uh, and in the same conversation, people will normally disclose to me how much they're struggling. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with money or circumstances or, or whatever. And so a natural evolution, if you like, of that conversation is that, you know, they'll either inquire of me or I'll, or I'll make the offer that says, look, there are ways, there are ways around this. You know, you, yeah. if you've got yourself in a bit of a mess or you're struggling, don't know quite what to do, then, you know, talk to me. And I, w I won't pursue it with them there and then, I, you know, because I'm not interested in making a sale. Mm. I'm only interested in giving them what they need to help themselves. Yes. Um, yes. You know, out of the, the, out of the situation. And that's the difference between the old paradigm, selling things and sharing an opportunity yeah. to, to benefit the person to make their lives better. Yeah. So, and that is the new paradigm. That is the new, yeah. the new yeah. companies that you and I belong to. That is the way they also fundamentally operate. So it is moving on from the old. So, yeah. so we've discussed those three ways that both of us feel is the way to go. Trading your capital, if you've got, uh, you know, fair amount, few tens of thousands, putting a little away each month or each week and watch that grow, selling off old jewelry you don't want or you don't love you know you'll be surprised and then the third way is joining a company that trades in money and building a team which is extremely lucrative and we've also gone into you know well what about gold and silver what about property there is nothing that touches on trading money nothing i gave the the illustration of the property that my sister's just sold currently you know and i thought wow wow now i know what i know about money that would drag me down having a property <laughs> and i'm just going to make 105 grand in 11 years 
when I know the truth of it, you can make that in a very short space of time. Gold and silver, well known, you know, gold is God's money, if you like, long term, long term, which means a generation. You know, it, it's not right now as, as lucrative as Bitcoin. So that's a no-go for me. Stocks and shares, very, very volatile until this world settles down into some sort of harmony. So, um, you know, it's forex trading, it's, it's Bitcoin. That's what we've come to understand. So we've been talking almost an hour now, Donald, on this subject. Is there anything else that you think people, um, you should touch upon to help people? Yeah, I think that the final thing that I'd like to say, Hazel, is um, just to elaborate on something you touched on a few minutes ago, is, you know, it, it's, like, it's like having a new job. One of the one of the things that I had to come to terms with was, you know, am I happy with the way things are? Answer yes or no. No. Yeah. Okay, you're not happy. What are you going to do about it? And that in itself presents you with the options of nothing, go back to square one and repeat this cycle ad infinitum, or do something about it. Make a change. Yeah. And it actually almost doesn't matter what that change is, providing you start to break whatever cycle or loop it is that you're trapped mm -hmm. in. Now, if you wake up in the morning and you lie there, you open your eyes and you honestly feel content, then you, you've made it. Do you know what I mean? You've actually made it. You are wealthy, regardless of actually, you know, if, if you don't wake up and think, oh God, where's the money coming from for the mortgage or for the kids' lunches or for, you know, for, for whatever else, if you have got to a stage where you're living within your means and you're providing for yourself in a way that you are fully satisfied, then the actual numbers don't matter. It is that that's entirely up to you. But if you are running scared at some level and you're feeling hunted by whatever it is, yeah. then you're going to have to make a change. And yeah. that change will be uncomfortable, but it will be nowhere near as uncomfortable as sticking with the status quo. And, and as you said earlier, the kind of misery of the situation that you're stuck in. Yeah. So you do need to be brave. You do need to be courageous. You do need to face up to yourself. You need to cut through your own self-delusional talk, which keeps you stuck in that situation, justifying you know, the things that are actually not important. There's so much on a personal level that you have to confront in order to get ahead and, and move into a, a new way of approaching things. And that really is nothing else works until you've made that mental, emotional, internal shift. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And um, it, it's not easy to do, but each and every one of us must confront ourselves mm -hmm. and get out of the delusion that we've been living in, but there is help. All you've got to do is reach out. Although Donald and I are talking about money um, because we feel it is so, so important, we also understand what the mindset you need behind that as your own personal support, but um, you've got to put the effort in and you've got to want it. You've got to want this like a drowning man wants fresh air. That's how much you've got to want this to drive you forward. So if you're in that kind of situation, then reach out by using the links below this video. And, you know, we're here to help you understand yourself and how you can change for the better. Because once you've done that, we start to change humanity and what's going on in this planet. And that's what we're here to do. So, Donald, thank you again for all of your wisdom and what you've shared here today. Um, and we'll make another video soon, um, carrying on from where we are now, um, when we come across new information that we feel is going to really, really help, not just us, but everybody. So on that note, Donald, thank you again for your time. And as always, lovely to chat. Yes, and thank you, Hazel. I um, very much enjoyed sharing, um, you know, our, our understanding of things. It's, it helps, you know, I think it helps all of us to, to see things clarified as a result of discussion like this. And, um, 
yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it does. And we've got the other previous three recordings, three webinars that we did, you know, and this is the fourth in that series. So, yeah. Bye, everybody.